All right, so we're going to be focusing primarily on modeling. Our last uh, video was just about how to navigate and get around the Maya interface. We're going to keep talking about that because it's going to matter. Um, but the focus is going to be on modeling. I'm just going to click and drag, get rid of these things in the scene. If I wanted to, I could just come over here, hold down Shift, hit Delete, and they're gone. Hit F, focuses out. Um, but in terms of modeling, you're going to be working uh, with a lot of different modeling tools in Maya. One of those is the polygon mesh modeling uh, process, which uses polygons in uh, three-dimensional space to allow you to create shapes. Um, last video, we talked about the shift right-click with nothing selected gives you the option to create things really quickly. We're just going to go ahead and create a cube just to sort of look at how this breaks down, right? This object has its own sort of local co coordinate system. The global coordinate system has an X, Y, Z origin right there. Uh, if you look at it, it's, there's a little grid there. Um, and uh, we are using Alt and left mouse button to sort of spin around so we can look at this. Um, another way to look at it is if we hit the space bar, we get our orthographic views, which is top, front, and side view. If I hit space bar again, it'll take me to just this perspective view and I can kind of zoom around. The keys that you're going to want to get real used to are Q, W, E, and R. Q selects things, W moves things, E rotates things, and yes, R scales them. Of course, it would make more sense if R were rotate for some, but that's not how it's set up. And there's uh, actually the reason for that is the traditional sort of step by step um, uh, of these things is uh, translate, rotate, and scale, right? Those are the operations. So the, in that order, W, E, R. If I hit W, I can send, kind of move this thing around, and it's moving inside the global coordinate system, but it has its own local 0, 0, 0, or, you know, origin on the, its axis, and you can kind of rotate things around this way. You can kind of free rotate it. Uh, and you'll notice in the channel box layer editor that these numbers are now all over the place. But if I were to say translate and make these sort of zero them out, rotate, zero them out, um, I'm back to normal, right? I could scale it up or down, etc. cetera. But um, this is a good way to sort of bring things back uh, to zero, 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 right? So um, one of the things I can do with this uh, origin or this axis point is I can actually change where it exists, right? So right now it rotates around that point, but if I tap the D key, um, I can actually change where its axis is. I can even move the axis outside the object. So if I do that and then click away, now it will rotate around that point, right? It will move based on that, although that's not as significant in this case and I can also scale it around that point. So it will scale up and down based on that point of origin, right? So, and what's kind of interesting about that is, you know, over here, if I go to rotate and I tap, you know, zero or whatever, um, you know, that gets rid of any rotation, but um, that, that origin is now, or the, uh, that axis is now out there outside of the object. And this can be very useful for a variety of construction or, or animation reasons. Um, but up here, you also notice that we've got inputs, we've got polycube. Um, this is going to track any construction history that we might make. But if I want to bring that origin back to the center of the object, these three buttons are going to become very popular for you. And there's different ways to make this more efficient. But if I click on this, this centers the pivot back into the center of the object's bound, you know, bounding box. So it centers the pivot back. So after I've made that adjustment by tapping D, right? And then I'll tap D again. If I come up here, it'll recenter it. Uh, and you may want to do that for a variety of reasons, right? But what we're going to be doing with our polygons uh, pretty regularly is we're going to be doing a few different operations. Number one, you have the ability to right click and go to vertex, edge, and face. Those are the three that will be used the most. So a face is this, right? And I happen to have soft selection on, so I'm going to turn that off by tapping B. We'll talk about that later. Um, and I also happen to have symmetry on, which I'm going to turn off, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so right now, if you don't have either of those things on, if you right-click and go to Face, you can select any face of the object. And again, 
we're going to be translating, rotating, and scaling vertices, edges, and faces. If you just sort of remember that, generally speaking, you're going to be okay because that's all we're doing. We're translating, rotating, or scaling vertices, edges, and faces. So this is a face. I might do the same thing with an edge. Again, WER is your friend. W being move, right? E being rotate, depending on how you want to rotate it. And scale, right? And then, of course, we might go to vertex. So if you wanted to take a couple of vertices, you could scale, translate, right? Rotate and scale. Vertices, edges, and faces. That's all we're doing. And this can allow us to do various things, right? Um, another really important thing that you can do with polygon mesh models in Maya is smooth preview them. So one is just the standard construction, but two will give you a smooth preview. If I were to smooth this object, it would create sort of this blob or rock shape. Now, the smoothing process, right, if I mesh smooth something, has to do with how much geometry it has to work with. So, for example, if I added um, different features to this, like an edge loop or something, it would change how it looks. In order to do any sort of editing to this geometry, we first have to have it selected. Because if I shift right click out here, it's just going to create objects. But if I select the object and shift right click, I can do all of these things. And it just depends on what I have selected. But in this case, we're going to look at the multi-cut tool, right? And the multi-cut tool will let us slice different uh, loops and whatnot across the across the geometry. I'm actually going to hold down control because this will give us an actual edge loop. Um, typically you don't want to just go chopping up edges and faces unless you really know what you're doing. Um, we want to try to maintain quads in our geometry. We'll talk about that later. There's the bell. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and hold down control as you can see in the corner over there and click and now I've got additional geometry. And now if I look at my edge uh, or my smooth preview, it gives me a different outcome. I'm going to go ahead and do that again and kind of illustrate the way in which this sort of alters the outcome of a smooth operation. Okay, the geometry actually isn't smooth. This is a preview. So if I were going to go out to object mode here, I can actually smooth this by shift right clicking and going to smooth here. Okay, all of these operations again exist up here. If I wanted to go click on mesh and smooth, I could do it. It's just much, much faster to do it here. Shift right click, go to smooth, I'm done. Okay, and it's created this geometry. Notice that there are divisions listed here and whatnot. Another thing you may or may not have noticed is that as I'm going, when I click on this object, I'm creating what are listed as inputs. This is construction history meaning, you know, I smoothed it, I split it, I split it, I split it, or edge looped it, right? I cut, used the polygon uh, cut tool, tweaked it, all of these things are being stored. The more of this you accumulate, the more memory is being used to actually look at this. It's stored in memory, okay? So you have to be kind of careful with that. I can smooth preview this, although at this point there's not much of a reason. Um, but now I have sort of this abstract rock looking thing um, because of the way that I modeled it and there is history over here, right? This means it's eating up uh, some degree of memory, some, some amount of memory. In order to get rid of this history, if you're satisfied with this result and you don't want to go back and tweak any of these things like the smooth divisions or something like that, or well, you can actually go up here and delete history. This is uh, interface. There's different ways to do that as well, but um, this button right here will actually let you delete history and now all you have are these uh, polygons as they exist currently. So that is how uh, I'd go about that. Another thing that you can do is uh, you can come in here and right click and go to face and you can extrude faces. I'm going to go to the move tool which is W and hold down shift and I can do this over and over again. And if I want to repeat the last thing that I did I can hit G uh, and it will do it that way. So we'll look more at this later.